A crushing eight goal to one second term for the Eagles set up a monstrous 80 point victory against the Suns in front of 51,000 fans who were there to witness the first ever West Coast Eagles night game at the brand new Optus Stadium. Welcome to another episode of Eagle Review, proudly sponsored by Kennard's Hire, Ben Roberts. Hi. Fantastic to have you back as always. Before we jump into the stats that matter, what a wonderful night for the footy club. Not only setting the season up with a three and one record at the quarter turn of the season, but just tremendous to get the win for a couple of milestone men who really are key figures and prominent players for this footy club. Yep, been play, good players for a long time. And uh, Nick with 150 he gets life membership and boy, oh boy, he's been influential in his uh, half game time so far this year. And Lecker, a great servant of the football club, um, third all time in the goal kicking. Uh, is such a good forward, so clever, so skillful. We've watched him for a long time kick. Wasn't his uh, 10 best goals, pretty bloody impressive uh, that came out during the week. Still contributing uh, after such a long time. And the other thing is uh, getting off for that bump. Uh, I don't think there was any malice in it. And uh, it was just one of those things that sometimes happens. Um, hopefully uh, Ainsworth can be okay and Lecker can um, kick another bag this week against the Blues. The start of the game it was very uh, skill error effective really. I mean the Suns first three goals coming off direct Eagles turnovers and three of our Bad four. Bad turnovers too. Three of our four also coming from mistakes from the Gold Coast Suns. But once West Coast found their groove, I mean, they really did put the contest to bed very early. Yeah, once they got into their gears, they uh, they really pulled away and class probably prevailed. It was 14-8 to 6-2 from turnovers on the night, so that's a, that's a big party margin right there. And scored some stoppages, six goals to zip at three-quarter time, 76%. Kicking efficiency for the Eagles, that's second in the AFL. It's impressive, that's isn't it? That's good, yeah, yeah, like it. Working the ball well with foot, Stephen, that's what we like to see. Mm. 57 inside 50, so that's another good uh, supply game. And uh, JK be very happy, uh, he did kick five, hopefully he continue to do that. 51% time in possession to 35, the rest, I know it doesn't have up to 100, where the other one goes, in dispute. That's what we like. Very technical at the review. People would complain, the Facebook comments littered yeah. with it, doesn't add up to 100, you morons. But 51 to 35 in terms of holding possession on the game, that's, uh, that's an old fashioned shellacking in that regard. So they had uh, class and they used it and they won well. Awesome to have the great man Josh Kennedy return. Looked a bit rusty, the old fella, but ended up with five goals on the night. Probably could have kicked eight in the end. One off Summer's record for all time, yep. West Coast leading goal kicker. Impressive stat. And Jack Darling moves into fifth all time for the Eagles. Hasn't he just started the season in electric fashion, Benny? Yep, absolutely. Uh, great to see. Mate, he's, um, the Jack Darling bashes really, really get to me because as if any other team in the comp wouldn't like to have a bloke who's notching 40 plus every single year he plays. That's, not, that's no it's no mean feat, Stephen. And now JK's back, because oh, what's going to happen after Jack's great start? Well, he comes back, kicks a few himself. They work together so well. They have done for such a long time, and they're used to it. 12 goals in the season for Jack. He's leading the club. J Josh might catch him, ultimately. We, we may end up seeing 17 marks to nine inside 50, and with that much supply, and with such good markers up forward, it's going to be a dangerous combo moving forward. Plenty of solid contributors on the night. You'd imagine with an 80-point victory, Chris Marston has also started 2018 in blistering fashion, doing more running than he's ever done, is what he said. And I can tell you, if Chris Marston's yeah. telling you that, he, than ever. he's doing a truckload of running. He's ended up with 30 touches, 12 marks, and a couple of snaggers. Everywhere. Gaff 32, loving the surroundings of Optus Stadium. Cripps four goals after a very quiet start. But hard to go past Yo and McGovern for the coaches' votes. Absolutely. Uh, Yo, a bit more time in the midfield this week. Well, a lot more time in the midfield after Duggo was out last week, so he had to go back. Played the role, a bit quiet. People saying, what's going on with Yoey? Well, I'll tell you what's going on with Yoey. 33, the best career high uh, on uh, Saturday night. Five inside 50s, four clearances, seven score involvements. Arguably his best game. He was everywhere and he had a good night. And McGovern, probably not the start we uh, expected from Gov. A little bit quieter. Sorry, Gov, if you're watching, probably doesn't. Intercept marking just out of vogue, a little bit across the AFL, but the Gov said, no, no, I'm about intercept marks. It's all me. I was going to say, tell me how many we took. 26 of those off the boot of the Gold Coast on Saturday night. Eight of those were from the Gov. So he's found his groove again, stood strong on Saturday night. I think the moment where he went back with the flight of the ball into the unknown, we oh, all yeah. thought he could have dislocated a shoulder. Oh, this yeah. is just to prevent a mark inside 50 on a very yeah. acute angle. Low percentage goal. Very, but that's just what Gov does. Throws his about. body with, uh, with little regard to his own safety. Yep. Daniel Venables, the ankle injury, the only souring note from the evening, helped off the field. Just his fourth game of AFL. Flashbacks to Liam Ryan. Yeah, just back to back, isn't it? Very sad, but... We're hoping the scan results are all good for Daniel Venables. Uh, Jack Red and Luke Shuey look okay, but we'll wait more for the injury report to be released tomorrow. Ben Roberts. Absolutely. Willie Rioli kicking his first goal for the club. Heartwarming scenes. You knew, this, you knew the celebration was going to be 
uh, on par as well. Do you reckon Lekker's going to have a word to him though post-game? Well, well uh, he really should have passed this to Marks, particularly on his milestone night. Particularly on his milestone night. Um, but I think uh, Lekker won't have a word, but Simo might just say mm. something to the young man and get uh, Jamie Graham, the forwards coach, to also pass on a message just next time. Do the team thing. But good to see you kick it. Time for roast of the round. Lucky to escape that one as well. Start with Brad Shepherd. What about handballing to the back of Jetta's head? Oh, Jetta's good, but he ain't that good. You can't catch footies <laughs> with your head, I don't reckon, Benny. The last time I checked, this is always dangerous roasting Jets because he's the only player that does watch the show. Shout out to Jets. Hey, Jets. Not like Jonathan Giles has said it's one of the worst shows he's ever seen on web television. Thanks, Joffa. Secret soft spot, I reckon. So this one here, Jetta, one of the better ball users in the team. Oh, I'm not sure what that one was about, kicking out from full back. Shannon Hearn, a bit sloppy there with a the free kick. For and him. Ainsworth plays to advantage. Oh. You moron. What were you thinking? The kick was so bad that it worked to their advantage. By mistake. Cue the Benny Hill music, and that's definitely a team roast. Um, how about this? Jack Darling setting himself. He's gone, I want the Toyota. I want the car. I can jangle the keys already, and then JK just goes, pluck. Thank you very much. I'll take that. And Tommy Lynch, what a superstar. Where will he be at the end of this year? Who knows? The Gold Coast are bloody hoping he stays there. Um, but that's not what I'm roasting him about. I'm roasting him about playing on Jack o Nelson, right place, anticipation, and goes bang, smothered, looks like a, a goose. Tommy Lynch is in my next one too. Barris, big mark going back. I would have thought you'd pay that every day of the week. What about Sexton's hanger that's almost crippled him uh, uh, for life? Yes, yeah, dangerous. Mm, big time. Going to go around the grounds very quickly as well. Tom Bell Chambers. I think rack taps are going out of fashion with the hand. Just use your face. That's working pretty well. The goal kicking down at Canberra, Benny. What's going on there? Jeremy Cameron's meant to be one of the best in the league, spraying him at all angles, not even the way the wind's going. No, there's no, there's no, there's no uh, stadium, so the wind just wreaks havoc. You're just putting this on Canberra, eh? I'm putting this on Canberra. Nothing good about Canberra, nothing. And this is another example of that. And we're going to touch on Canberra again later. I reckon I'm going to give the winner to something. Wow. There. I thought we are going to give the winner to Dunkley. Mate, dropping this game winner, I think my, my cat could have taken that one. <laughs> that's saying something. Any other week probably would have won, but I'm going to give it to. Now, we've we, we got to be careful here. We don't like giving it to the umpires when we, uh, when we can avoid it. I like that little eye roll. But this has to be said. If this isn't out of bounds, have the look. His planted foot is out of bounds. He's a left footer. He could have a pie in the first row of the pie stand. There's no way that's in bounds. Stop the ball. There has to be boundary throw in. Roast of the round to you, I'm young fella. I'm surprised you didn't give it the Mexican wave. You're not a Mexican wave man, are you? Well, you only see him in Perth. We're the only. I don't. You don't. We're unique, Benny. We're unique. Unique New York. Boundary round pie. Throw in. Roast for you. Cheers. Thanks, Kenneth. Hi. All the best.